Lance, it's tried. Rude to run. He's down inside the 20. Makes the move. CD Lamb is going to score. 17th play of this drive. It's Prescott. Pressure in his face again. Going for the corner. Cooks. Cooks. Does he have it? Touchdown, Dallas. Oh, we're tied. Let's take a look here. Great job going up the high point. The ball. He's got it there. Does he maintain through the ground? He sure does. Yeah, he sure does. That's a big time drive. We mentioned Dak Prescott needed his moment. Was it going to come today? And I'll tell you what, that drive right there, if it holds up, pretty good moment right there for this season. That was an unbelievable catch and throw. Cooks, who's not a big guy, he's only 5'10. Now third down and 13, blitz coming. Prescott able to get out of the end zone. And now airs it out for Lamb. He's got it. He's gone. When he gets there, it's a touchdown, Cowboys. On top. Draw the 22 coming back with the Mike McCarthy, Texas Coast offense. Happy to go talk about this real quick. Gonna just fly through this real fast. This is going to be the next part of the next playbook I want to do. Um, again, my first three years was with the was with the um, was with the Packers as an intern. Um, really, that was a short term thing. That was like a one month thing, two month thing. Uh, but that's when I met Mike McCarthy. Um, that led to uh, part of the reason why I ended up getting a job with the Jets. Uh, he recommended me to Brian Scheinheimer, who was his uh, his buddy. And that worked out for me. Even I was supposed to be on the defensive side of the ball, but they needed me to go coach offense. And thank God I had that offense experience from my time with the Packers. So I learned a little bit about the offense, okay? The playbook is online. You can go find this playbook online. It's not hard to find. Um, really, it's not the Cowboys playbook, but it's just the old Packers playbooks. And I'll show you a little bit about that here. Uh, JT O'Sullivan talks about this uh, offense a lot. Really, from the from the time when he was with the Saints on his QB school, he talks about when Mike McCarthy was the offensive coordinator and he was one of his quarterbacks, he learned a lot about NFL-style offense from Mike McCarthy. So if you ever watch his uh, videos, he talks a lot about it. And uh, I want you guys to re realize you can use that as a source in learning this offense. So it's not just talking to me. It's also just listening to what he says with his offensive mind. It's a really good thing to kind of look at, all right? All right, everybody can help. I think everybody has an opinion about the Cowboys. Everybody kind of knows what they're doing by now. Everybody has seen Mike McCarthy over the past two decades. So this is something where I may miss something. I'm going to miss something. This is like an open source thing. I want you guys to help me out as well. All right, here goes the, the playbook that's out there on the internet. Um, it's really easy to find. It's really a pass game install from 2012. You can see it's 511 pages. Look at the bottom. It's very hard. It's kind of light, but you can see there's a lot of different things in here. Here's one of the plays that you're going to end up seeing in the video coming up here pretty soon. It's the first play of the game, but this is just what they call their double concept. Okay. So double go, this talks about the outside guys running vertical, the inside guy, all right, he's running. I think they call it a middle read. Let me see. Does it say it there? All right, and that's really just a converted route. It's a dig versus middle field closed, and it's a post alert versus middle field open. Okay, and then you have a play action fake, token fake, uh, really off of the draw action. Um, and then really a lot of times this play is also audibled or it can be killed, as they call it, to a run play versus a too high safety look okay all right so what's the positives of running this offense it's easy to find formations for this offense they're going to run some generic things that are going to be found in every playbook from spread to bunch to three by one nub okay um the concepts are also in every book so a lot of their base concepts that they run aren't uh you know they're not hard to find so from different concepts of um, spacing to slants to levels to four verticals to flood, 
You know, every book has at least two to three of those concepts. So it doesn't even really matter if you're using a stock book or not. Now, I am going to make my custom book available eventually. It's not ready yet. So I'm going to talk through this stuff through some stock books for the first couple of weeks. I'm going to use, obviously, the Dallas Cowboys stock book. And I'm also going to use the Packers. One of the guys on my Patreon asked me to use the Packers book because that's the book he needed for his league. So I made him a, a ready sheet of all the plays he can run from that playbook. Eventually down the line, one of my goals is actually to work with Scheme Guide. He's a guy that I'm in contact with. Um, we are talking and we are trying to maybe come up with, uh, he has a very good setup over in his Patreon with uh, dynamic playbooks where basically you have a dynamic call sheet, I'm sorry, where you can have your call sheet um you know, update, not updated, but you can have the plays on there and then you can, I forgot the word exactly, but um, not replicate it, but the, you, you click a button and then new plays pop up. And there's a name for it. I'm losing my, my train of thought right now, but basically it's a very nice tool that he has. It requires a lot of work and him and I might sit down and try to, and with the help of others, sit down and try to uh, figure out how to maybe take one of the two playbooks that are stock out there um, and work it that way so that the call sheet is there for you, okay? I won't promise you that project, but that's something that I'm working on, okay? Anyway, uh, easy reads. A lot of the West Coast offense is one to two prog pure progression, all right? There are some pure progressions with options. There's some pre-snap looks as well. Um, there's some, you know, but it's very QB friendly, as I like to say. Hot route friendly. You need that in an offense like uh, McCarthy's because there are plays, and we'll talk about it in more detail on my Patreon guys. You guys should expect a video tomorrow kind of detailing more of the playbook uh, in a long-form format and giving you some plays that you can start with right now and some concepts you can work and some JTO videos that I would recommend. I'm trying to give him some, obviously, give him more traffic this way too. So. But anyway, some of the plays have uh, options off of them, you would say, or plays that would convert versus certain looks. So, for example, a streak route could become a curl or a hit or a comeback versus a particular coverage. You got to see that. But the good thing is that you don't need route apprentice for that. It's kind of similar to my Peyton Manning offense. A lot of that stuff, you don't need route apprentice, okay? You don't need to have extra routes, okay? All right. So then that. I also believe that I was going to put this playbook out really a while ago, but I wasn't sure if McCarthy was going to be back. He is. So you're going to get the same playbook next year if you're a Cowboys fan. That's good. So we can start planning now. We can start planning for next cycle if you want to run this offense. All right. So the formations, okay? You're going to get a variety of different formations. You're going to get bunch. They love bunch. That's something that they use. You're going to get the one four split formations. That's something that they like a lot. This is like their personality, in my opinion. So if I'm looking at it from a defensive point of view. If I'm getting ready to play against the Cowboys, I have to have answers for bunch. I have to have answers for one four split, which is just the trips formation with the back offset to the same side as the trips. Empty. You got to be ready for that. They will motion to empty. They will line up and empty. And then the ultimate alignments is really talking about how they will move their best players, CeeDee Lamb or whoever it might be, Brandon Cooks, Speed Guy. They'll put them in different spots to get them open, okay? So they won't always just be at the same spot all game. Now, let's talk about the run game real quick. It seems like they're not, I don't know the, the, the statistics, but I know they were top five in passing. I don't think they were top 10 in running. Uh, they were top, I think, in touchdowns scored during the regular season. So... The run game is kind of a secondary thought right now, but this is, a, this is what I saw. A lot of weak zone. So inside zone, weak, which is really just saying that you're running away from the tight end. Duo, okay? So that's a gap scheme. That's pretty much power and no pullers. Duo is a popular play amongst the NFL. It's become every team pretty much has a form of duo now, okay? Then you have pin and pull concepts, which are just basically like, they're really, it's a combination of, zone and gap scheme mixed together basically an offense is running zone to the right let's say and if one of the players is uncovered okay instead of double teaming and working with the guy you're going to pull out 
and go get, you know, and and look for the first color. I'm not 100% on that. I'm not an offensive line coach, but from a defensive standpoint, that's how I would explain it. Very simple. It's just another way of running zone with pullers, really. That's how I look at it. Then we have read option. That's something that Dak does a little bit, enough to keep you honest. And then some of the plays look like they're actually QB design runs, okay? In the passing game, they have a whole, this is what makes the offense different than what it was in 2012 or 2010. You get more RPOs, more screens, more jet motions, okay? And again, more alternate alignments. Something you would see in the college game a little bit, okay? So this is a big part of their offense. Really, I would say this is really what makes the offense different, makes it easy for Dak to get easy throws. For one, he throws the ball five yards and gets 80 yards out of it throughout a game, okay? So I feel like that's something to think about. The uh, The quick game routes is traditional West Coast. Again, traditional West Coast is more like Bill Walsh, Mike Holmgren, all right, West Coast. Even going into Gary Kubiak a little bit, Gary Kubiak obviously is like the in-between link between the Shanahan's, and you're going to always get your, and there's a mistake there, Dragon, it should be Lion. So they like to run double slants. Dragon is a slant and a flat, and sometimes in the same play, you can have both, one on each side, and uh, that would be read off of it. It's a pre-snap look, but that's a whole other story for another day. Stick concepts are big in the offense. Shoddy is a big part. Brian Scheinheimer, the coordinator, he, he loves, for some reason, I think they call it a stitch, where it's like stick hitch. So, like, the inside guy runs a stick and the outside guy runs a hitch. I always thought from a defensive point of view, you're making life easy for us. But they love that. Spacing is really spider in the West Coast terminology. Um, the spacing is a big play for them. Then we get to the drop back, like, five-step game. Um, you get verticals. We talked about this a little bit already, but really... That is their main core. And if you go back to even the Aaron Rodgers days, this is what he made his money off of. And it was not just running streaks. It was about running back shoulder fades, running hitches, running curls, running comebacks, okay, in the Madden language. In their language, they have different names for routes that go beyond 10 yards, like, or really starts at eight, I think. And I had to learn them. I forgot them now, but they had different names like hinge, is a certain type of curl run to a certain depth. So they have a lot of variety within their plays and they will convert versus certain coverages. They will tag, they will say all go, hinge, X hinge, G hinge. They have uh, Puma, which are comebacks, right? Then you have search, which are like option routes on the inside. So they will say all go, all go special is the three by one version of it, but they're not just running streaks, okay? It's a lot deeper than that, and that's something that I think a lot of people don't know when they watch the Cowboys. They're like, why do they run the same play over and over? It's the same thing with the with the back in the day in the Packers. It looked like the same play, but it's not. All right, Flood, and we'll talk about that. Flood, there's different names for it. Sale, Seattle. Uh, I got to kind of find some more in the playbook, but that's just, we all know, you know, that's a big part of most offenses, but they like to run down on third down. Now, I think the difference here is the levels concept kind of replaces what used to be a lot more drive concept. So levels, they always had versions of levels, and they just basically took Indianapolis level system and just made it their own. I mean, Scheinheimer, the reason why I have the audio of Tom Moore talking to the Jets coaches is because Shadi was interested in it. So pretty much he took a lot of that. But also before Shadi even became the coordinator with the with the Cowboys, uh, what's his name? Uh, McCarthy was running this stuff anyway. Okay. So you have levels concepts, which is a nice compliment off the vertical game. Then you have the deep crossers. Okay. Deep crossers is not really what you think of like play action. We're going to take shots. That's not what I mean. That's more of a wide zone theory. This is more of a drop back. And then you have a inside cross, like a slot cross, and then you have a dig behind it. That's pretty much what you're looking at. But then off of play action, we do have another version of that as well. We have the same play off of play action. Okay. Red zone passes. You're going to see a lot of double posts, pepper, scissors, a lot of corner routes on the com you know, combination of a post and a corner. Then you have a lot of smash concepts, high lows, right? And then you have mesh. This is where the only thing that really kind of looks like anything of a drive route would be mesh, except it's just double shallows. I think everybody who plays Madden knows you've seen mesh probably a million times by now. 
And then the wheel routes that come off a of mesh just makes the play even harder. So, you know, that's part of their deal. This is more in the red zone from what I've seen. And then Salem really is just a high-low concept. Um, I don't think you need the third element of somebody running down the middle of the field, but it's just a high-low. They call it pin. Um, somebody sits down and runs a hitch, and then usually the outside receiver uh, comes and runs a dig behind him. When we have the play actions, so we have boots, of course. We can't be a West Coast team without booting. Um, it's a little bit of what they do. It's not like they expect, they're not setting up for the boot. Boot is more of like a change up. Oh, it's there. Let's just, let's just run it and let's run it every now and then. All right. Then we have, um, our drop back and red zone passes that we talked about. They all can come off a of play action. Overall, man, this is a good offense. I think in Madden for people who just want to run a balanced style of attack, you want to be able to run and pass. You want to be able to take some shots, but then you want to also have some good short passes too. So. That's the reason why I like it. I think it's very QB friendly. I think it's also something that when you watch the games, Dak Prescott in general, I think he's taught just like Aaron Rodgers was, or well, sometimes the best answer is to use your feet uh, instead of even throwing a check down sometimes. How to keep plays alive as long as you can. Use your feet when you can and use it more as a, hey, go through your reads. And a lot of the reads, most reads in most offices are one to two to three, right? Really, this is more like one to two and then run. <laughs> so I think it's something that, uh, you know, you have to be able to uh, have some athletic ability to be, you know, to play in this offense. You don't have to be like Michael Vick fast, but you got to be decent. And uh, I think that's the reason why they went out and got Trey Lance for a third round pick, because he kind of fits the mold of what that offense wants. Uh, an athletic quarterback who can run when he needs to, but can throw. All right, what we're going to do here is take a look at the first two series of their game versus the Lions late in the season. I kind of looked at games late in the season because I felt like they were playing good football. They were playing good teams. And uh, we're just going to watch the first two series and just try to look at some of the, the um, features of this offense, what makes it go, all right? All right, so this is the first play of the game. Let's go back on that real quick. So they start off in a three-by-one set. You'll see it from the end zone. Then they get to a two-back set, and they check the ball down to what is the tight end, but he's acting as a fullback. But you can see the play here from a route standpoint. This is what I was talking about of double go. So you get the outside receiver running his go. This one's running his go. This Whoever this player is is running that middle read route. So versus post-safety defense, he's going to run a dig. Versus the split safety open, which is what this what becomes. He runs a post. And then you have your check down routes right here. Okay, so this is off of a token fake play action, off of the draw play. And um, it's just a good play to start the game. Very simple concept. They end up getting in the cover too. He just checks it down. A lot of times on this play concept, you're going to get people what they call a kill which means like they would change the play. It's a double play call. A lot of times, if it's the look of cover two, they will check to um, run. They didn't do it because I think there was good disguise by the defense on that play. All right, here we go with bunch. Back is offset to the bunch. They run an inside zone play or an option play off of that. And again, this is the one four split that I was talking about. So when you look at this formation, you have one, two, three, four guys on the same side, including the running back. So that's called one four split deep uh, plays. You know, again, what that happens is there's usually a check from a defensive standpoint versus bunch, right? But as soon as you get the fourth element in there, you have to ha you have to account for it somehow, some way. Usually, it's the backside linebacker who has to work over, and he might work over as well, or you might just man this guy up right here. Or you might even involve your safety and get him to play coverage over to this side so everybody can kind of bump. But you need to have an adjustment. So coaches, you know, in this system, they want to see the first, what, 15 plays, a scripted, and they're trying to get information out of the defense. What's the defense's check to this play? And then once they figure that out, they can advance and do different things later on. But this is just a good way to start the game, run a little read option play, okay? The defense wins, but still, there's information that's gathered, but that's part of their personality. You're going to see a lot of that. Okay, here we go with a little bit of a gray-wide flex formation. So you have three receivers, right? 
So they run all the different types of formations that can give you problems. You have your backside tight end, and then a nub split or a flex split. And again, that backs to this side. So it's just a regular three by one formation. But you got information. Let's see what play they run. Um, when I say you have information, meaning that like from an offensive point of view, you kind of see what their checks are versus certain formation looks. You get a little motion. I think this is third down. They end up running some sort of like almost like a smash concept at the top with a little drive route from the bottom. CD Lamb makes somebody miss. Good job on the offense. So that kind of falls into the category of high low smash concept. Um, really, a lot of the stuff I said they do in the red zone also does apply to third down, okay, and vice versa. Again, get the ball in your playmaker's hands. Let them work. You don't have to do much from that standpoint. I think one of the things that kind of hurts this defense is teams that like to press. I think if you play off, you're pretty. there's enough in this offense that you're going to win. All right, here we go with like a three-by-one set at the bottom of the screen. You see that? It's almost like a loose bunch, like two and three over here because you count from outside in, one, two, three. Two and three are pretty tight, so that looks like a bunch. But this guy out here is sitting out there closer to the numbers. But they're going to run a bunch play, which is what? Let's take a look at this real quick. Again, what are your bunch plays you like to see? I've named one of them already. Spacing concept, okay? So this is what would be in the game, a spacing switch. All right? You get kind of that spray out. This is the reason why i rather do it from the bunch. I think that spray out should come from inside. It'll be a little bit better spacing for you. But again, this is an example of Dak Prescott kind of like extending this play. Yeah, right. I'm not. I'm not sure he's being. Well, I know he's. He's given the okay to do this. I'm pretty damn sure of it. You know, don't just play give up and just throw the ball away. Kind of, you know, extend the play, find the guy. It seems like that's really kind of been programmed into him to do. All right, gets him in trouble sometimes, but it actually for this season worked out well. All right, here we go with an empty formation. Okay, now they are they they are pretty much in what they would call the high red zone or the gold zone or whatever they call it, money zone. It's really take a look at this. They're like close to the 20, but they're a little bit outside of it. So this is where, from a defensive coaching standpoint, I would always talk to my DBs about, hey, do they take shots once they pass the 50? Most teams do, okay? And this is a team that wants to do it. So they actually get to like scissors concept, all right, which is just a post in a post in a corner. A little bit different deal here. He kind of runs that indie route, that little bit of a shin and out route. All right. I don't know what happens down here. I think you get you get a chip here. I'm not sure what this route is on the backside, some sort of individual route. Okay. But they're trying to take that shot, like I had said, close to the red zone. You're going to see more posts and more corners in their offense. So you're going to see that kind of pop up here. They're trying to scheme them up a little bit by making number two run that skinny post. So that's what they like to do. Let's take a look at it from the end zone shot here. Did he just miss him? I think he had a touchdown, right? I can't really tell from that angle. It looks like he had a step on that uh, that DB. Okay, here goes a regular three-by-one formation, Y off. Usually that means a chip. So he does chip the guy. The tight end chips the guy at the top of the screen. Boop, chips to the end. And then now they're running a classic third down concept, which is just scissors again or flood. This is actually in the playbook. All right. This is like when I say in the playbook, this is in Madden. I think it's, I forgot the formation, but I know I have it. All right. So just traditional scissors down here with the big dig on the backside. Okay. So that's what you get here. This is actually a third and medium they ran this on. Looks like a cover two man look. Nope. Wasn't cover two. They got me. Uh, good job with their disguise. And this one got picked. So it's not necessarily Dax, like a Dak for some reason. I don't know why he didn't rip it on time maybe he got scared of the corners underneath it but he threw it late that wasn't a concept problem that was an execution problem all right so that's the end of that series let's take a look at the next one all right next series here we got three by one nub formation so this looks like a version of some sort of uh tight end trips formation that you would see in madden but again we get the running back is offset to the three receiver side so that's the one four split they kind of motion this guy down. They pull. It looks like a counter play kind of from the backfield. Backside guard and tackle pull. 
And I'm not sure if this is exactly the counter bash play that everybody likes to run, but it looks like an option play. Again, this is the personality of that, the college part of the offense, which looks like it's a good 25 to 30%, maybe more of what they like to do. Here's an example of three by one motion to two by two. That's something that you're going to see a lot of. I think they do that to make sure that, you know, they're trying to catch people, you know, trying to check in and out of their defenses. This ball is dropped, but the route that we get here is four verticals. So the thing that I like what McCarthy does is he shows you a formation. He doesn't just line up in two by two and run four verticals a lot. A lot of times he's going to motion to it. He's going to try to get players in different spots. Okay, so this one kind of opened up a little bit for the tight end. Looks like they were trying to play quarters coverage. I think they should have had some set of conversions on the outside. I'm not 100% sure, but I do think that a lot of times some teams would teach the outside routes to convert versus a cover four look or if a guy's playing on top of you to like a comeback. And that would help. The ball did get kind of knocked out a little bit, so maybe it wasn't a tight end's fault. Looks like quickly they were in three by one, then they motioned to empty. All right, this is like, this is shock at the bottom, really, which is another form of spacing if you want to think about it that way. Guys are ending up in the same kind of spot, but just from different different uh, starting points. All right, so again, shock would be this little guy's working a stick. He's working the fade. He's sitting down. I'll have to add that to my custom book. Over here, I'm not 100% sure what we get. We get kind of like a lazy kind of dig route, and we get some type of like chip to the flat. But look at Dak. I think Dak has this, he, I think he does a good job of uh, belonging this play here. I think there's a free runner on him, and he avoids the sack, keeps his eyes up, like we talked about, a little bit of a scramble, scramble drill, and C.D. Lamb just burns the corner, man, who had to try to play late in the down. And that's the big thing about this offense. So it's kind of one of those things, if you're playing Madden, expect – to yourself to have to make some of these plays to have success if you want to run the offense. Have a quarterback that's a little bit dynamic, you know? Try to keep plays alive a little bit, you know? Don't be reckless with it, but also be scary with it. I think that's the one thing that in today's football, a lot of a lot of a lot of the best QBs are the guys that can make these type of plays off schedule. And uh it makes defenses have to worry about it. So Hope you guys like the intro for this um, Texas Coast offense. I think it's really very uh, relatable to Madden. I think when you play somebody, they're going to give you respect that you beat them in multiple different ways, different formations and plays. I'm going to try to work it myself in two of my leagues, see if I can get some good results for you guys. Guys on Patreon, expect me to hit you with a video tomorrow, just kind of outlining more detail of more of like what to look for with the plays. And then from a playbook standpoint, um, we're going to have like three different options here. We're going to have a custom book, okay, which is what I'm going to use a lot probably when I play because I just want to get different looks. I want to get more formation variety. But I'm also going to have uh, the Green Bay book, which is already done because I did it already for somebody. And that's going to be the stock book. So I'll tell you what plays to run from the Green Bay stock book. And then I'll tell you what plays to run from the Dallas, obviously, stock book. I have to use their offense, too. So we'll get two different stock books. We'll get a custom book that should fit everybody. Guys on Xbox, you guys can work with the stock books if you want. Or if you want to wait for me to make that custom video of all the plays we created in the book, I can do that, too. All right? Guys on the Patreon, expect to get some updates pretty regularly about this offense, how it's been working, what should I do, how can I make it better. So it's that play-by-play -play after a game type of stuff. You know what I mean? All right, guys. I'll talk to you. Man. I'll talk to you later. Peace.